Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about Docker namespaces and their application. There are three important concepts used by Docker as the foundation for implementing this container technology. Namespaces, control groups and copy and write file system which is also called as union file system. In this video, we are going to discuss about namespaces. Namespaces provides isolated workspace for containers. So using namespaces, Docker will create containers which will run in isolation. That means when the containers are created, the namespaces provide those processes with their own view of the system. For example, if we don't use namespaces, when we create multiple processes like P1, P2 and so on, each process will see the same process IDs, the mount points, the network interfaces, the Unix time sharing system which provides the domain name and host names and the inter-process communication and the users and groups. That means the processes P1 and P2 will view the same information. The problem with this is every process will know the information about other process which will be a problem with respect to security vulnerabilities and so on. So Docker uses namespaces concept to run the containers in isolation. When we say containers, they are nothing but the processes in Linux but they will use the concept of namespaces. So with namespaces concept, the container C1 and C2 created by Docker view the system differently. That means the container 1 cannot see the process IDs of container 2. Similarly, the container C2 cannot see the mount points of container C1. Similarly, other things like network interfaces, IPC, user and so on. That means when you create containers, Docker will create isolated namespaces for each of the containers. That means C1 will have isolated namespaces for PID, mount point, network interface and so on. Similarly, C2 will have isolated namespace for PID, mount points, network interfaces and so on. So, these namespaces will allow these containers to run in isolation. Now, let us see all these namespaces in detail. Before going through the demo, we need to understand that the namespaces are a feature of Linux kernel and this Linux kernel feature is being used by Docker to implement containers technology. Now, for the demo, let us create different containers to explain these concepts of namespaces. Let us start with two containers C1 and C2 and we'll create these containers with Alpen image. So this is the terminal one. So here I'll create container C1. So we'll open an interactive terminal for this container and the name of the container is C1 and the image is Alpine. And I will run the sh command in the terminal. So now it will download the image and then it will try to create a container out of this image. Now we are within the container. Similarly, let us create container C2 in second terminal. This container also using the same image Alpine. So now we are in the container C2. Let us verify the IP address of C1 now. So here within the container, we can see the IP address of the container C1 is 172.7.0.2. Similarly, let us verify the IP address of container C2. The IP address is 172.17.0.3. So that means the network interfaces of both containers are completely different. One container cannot use the network interface of another container. So how it is achieved? This is achieved via the network namespaces of Linux. So Docker uses the network namespace for creating isolated network interfaces for both the containers. Now let us verify the host names for both the containers C1 and C2. This is the host name of the container C1 and this is the host name of container C2. So these are also isolated. This is achieved by using the UTS namespace of Docker. Now let us verify the process IDs of both the containers. So within the container C1, we can see the process ID 1 corresponding to the sh command we have executed here. Similarly within the container C2, and this PID1 indicates the sh command executed within the container C2. So these two PIDs are completely isolated. So to explain this, we can create one more container C3 with Tomcat. So let me do that. This is another terminal. Here let us create another container C3 with Tomcat image. So I will run this container using detached mode. So this will download the Tomcat image and it will create a container out of it. The container is created. Let us verify all the containers in the system. So now we can see there are three containers C1, C2 and C3. So C3 is running. 
this catlinux.sh run command within the container. Now let us verify the processes within the system corresponding to all these containers. So these are all these processes which are created in the system corresponding to the containers. So this is corresponding to the container C1 process and this is corresponding to container C2 and this is corresponding to container C3. But the container C1, C2 and C3 cannot see the process IDs of another containers within the isolated workspace. They only can see the processes which are running within that container. So that is what we have seen here. The first container can see only the process ID within container C1. Similarly, in C2 as well. We can also check the process ID within C3 as well. So for that we can go inside the container. So now we are within the container C3. We can verify the process here. So here we can see there is a process ID 1 corresponding to the Java process which runs the Tomcat process. So that means the containers are isolated with respect to PIDs. One container cannot see the process IDs of another container. This is achieved via the process ID namespace or PID namespace. Now let us check the mount points within the host and within each of the containers. Let me come out of C3 container. So let us verify the mount points here. So these are the different mount points within the host. Let us verify the mount points of container C1. Here we can see that the mount points within the container C1 are different to the mount points which we can see within the host. And also we can see the mount points within the container C2. So here the mount points within the container C2. So these are also different with respect to the host mount points. So let us try to create one file here within container C2. So we have created test.txt here. So this is the content. Now let us check this file content within C1. Here it is saying that there is no such file or directory because the file systems within container C1 and C2 are isolated to each other. One container cannot interfere with the file systems of another container. This is achieved via the mount namespace. Now let us discuss about the user namespace feature of Linux. This Linux kernel feature allows the docker containers to have the least user privileges. So for this let us take an example. Initially I will create a container without enabling this feature and then we will enable this feature and we will create another container and we will see the difference of privileges after enabling this feature. So now I am creating an example container T1 using Ubuntu image. Here I am assigning the name and for this example I am sharing a mount point from the host to the container for example slash opt. So slash root slash opt is the directory within the container. So for this I am using Ubuntu image and let us execute bash. So now we are within the container. So let us check the id here. Now we can also check with oami command. So the user id is root within the container as well as the host. So for all the containers which needs to run with root there may be some security issues. For example here so let, let us go inside this slash root opt. Here let us create some file. So here we are able to create the file within the container. You can see that and it is owned by root. That means the root user within the container has the privileges to create or modify some of the files within the file system which is shared with the root user of the host. So to improve the security posture what we can do we can allow the lesser permissions to the root user within the container by enabling user namespace. Let us see how we can do it. So let me exit from this container. So before enabling this feature, let us understand how this feature works. So in Linux when we create users, generally a UID is assigned to that user. For example, let us create a user test user 1. Here we can see the ID of the user. So this is the UID and this is the GID. So when we create user, the UID and GID are assigned to that user. In addition to the UID, we also have subordinate UID and in addition to the group ID, we have subordinate group ID. So let us see those files as well. So these are the two important files which contain the subordinate UIDs 
and subordinate GIDs for the users and groups we create. Let us open this file. So here we can see there is an entry for the test user one which we created now. So for each user entry, this indicates the starting sub user ID and this is the count of the users. That means starting from this number, this test user one can have these many subordinate user IDs. So when we create containers and after enabling the user namespace, the range of these user IDs can be mapped to the container. So this user ID will not have any root privileges. Generally they will have non-root privileges. And if you want a particular permission to that user ID, we can assign those permission to corresponding file systems. So now let us enable the user namespace feature. So this is the official page of the Docker website. So here we can see that this is the option we have to enable in the Docker service or etc docker daemon.json. I'll use this option to change Docker service file. So this is the directory where our service exists. Let us open docker service file here. And this is the variable in which we have to add that option. Here we can mention a default option or the user which we created earlier. So here I am using test user 1. So if we specify default here, then docker will create a default user called docker map. And that user will have an entry in the sub UID and sub GID which we have shown earlier. So if you don't use default, and if you use another user and then and docker will use corresponding entry from the sub uid and sub gid files so here we are using test user 1 so it will use the corresponding range of user ids so let us save this file now let us restart the service so the service is restarted we can check the status So here we can see that the option is enabled. Now let us create another container with the same options which we executed for T1. Here I will name the container as T2. And the container creation is failed with some error. So here it says can't get final child's PID from the pipe. Generally this error is due to the insufficient number of user namespaces. So for that let us verify the maximum user namespaces which are configured in the system using sysctl command and this is the property for that here we can see that the default value is 0 we have to assign the non-zero value for this so let me assign some value here I am assigning 20,000 for example let us check the value again so now let us try to create the container again now I will name it as t3 so now the content is created and we are within the container let us go to the opt directory. So now we can see that the permissions of the previous test1 file which was created earlier is changed. So let us try to create another file now. And it says that the permission is denied because even though the user is root, it is not having the privileges as in container t1 because we have enabled the user namespaces that assigns least privileges for the container by using the sub user id mapping. So in this way we can use the user namespaces feature of Linux kernel to provide the least privileges for the containers. Similar to all the namespaces which we discussed till now, we also have another namespace called IPC namespace. So that will isolate the inter-process communication objects in each of the containers. For example, shared memory segments, message queues and so on. So in this video we have seen what is a docker namespace and we have seen different types of namespaces and how they are used to isolate the containers. I hope this video helps. Thanks a lot for watching.